Hospital Management Board, Ocean State. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Uh, we hope for the best tonight. Thank you. Uh, you can mute yourself now. You can mute yourself, Dr. Buki. Thank okay. you. Mr. Wonderful yeah. moderation today. Ma, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, tonight uh, um, we we have a topic that um, uh, our presenter will be presenting tonight. Uh, the topic is a guide to setting up an oncology pharmacy and roles of an oncology pharmacist by no other person but our dear friend from Plateau State, pharmacist Emia Adama, assistant director of pharmaceutical services and head of oncology pharmacy units, uh, University of Joss Teaching Hospital, Joss. So I would like to, to introduce him and I'd like him to almost immediately commence this presentation but he is having a challenge, and we are banking on Dr. Bello. Dr. Bello, please. Um, I don't know whether Dr. Alfonsus has forwarded the slides to you. Not yet. Um, can Not we? Not yet. Okay. I'm still, I'm, okay. I'm still expecting okay. from you. Okay. So can we have the video? Can we have the video, Japan video, while we wait okay. for that to happen? Sir? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we have challenge. Do you sometimes have questions about your new and existing medications? Does it ever seem a bit overwhelming? Do you ever feel like you need more time for someone to go over your medications with you? If so, Womack Army Medical Center has clinical pharmacists who are medication experts that will sit down with you and assist you in understanding your prescriptions. All right, Ms. Smith, your lab results came back and it shows that you have diabetes. I know you're already taking a lot of medications and this new diagnosis can be overwhelming. We have clinical pharmacists here if you're interested in seeing one. Yes, I am. They can go over your new medications and talk with you about how to manage your diabetes. Okay, how do I make the appointment? Scheduling your appointment is as easy as going to the front desk or calling this phone number here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, clinical pharmacy. This is Ms. Davis, how may I help you? Hi, this is Mrs. Smith. My doctor recommended that I meet with a clinical pharmacist. I was just diagnosed with diabetes. I'm already on a ton of medications, and now she started me on some new ones. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to take or when I'm supposed to take them. No problem. We can assist you with that. We have clinical pharmacists and all our primary care clinics that work hand in hand with your primary care providers to help manage your medications. The clinical pharmacists can meet with you for 30 or 60 minutes, depending on your needs. Since this is an initial appointment, Ms. Smith, we will recommend a 60 minute appointment. Which clinic are you assigned to? I'm assigned to Clark Clinic. It's Tuesday at 10 o'clock, sound. That'll be perfect. Where should I go and what am I supposed to bring? You'll be seeing Dr. Womack, the clinical pharmacist who is located on team two. Please check in at the front desk, bring all your medications to the appointment to include anything you're taking over the counter as well as your glucometer. During your appointment, the clinical pharmacist will go over each medication to screen for drug interactions and side effects. At the end of the appointment, you will be provided with an updated medication list. You may want to make a list of questions or concerns that you want to discuss at your visit. Ms. Smith, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. So I'm going to bring my medication bottles and I'll bring my glucometer. This sounds like it's going to be very helpful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Womack will see you on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. If you need to reschedule your appointment, please contact your clinic. Thank you and have a Thank you. Hi, Ms. Smith. I'm Dr. Womack, one of the clinical pharmacists. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
Your doctor referred you to me to discuss your new diagnosis of diabetes and to go over your new medications today. Yes, I was diagnosed with diabetes last week and they started me on insulin. I went to the pharmacy to pick it up, but I've not started taking it yet. I'm not really sure that I even know how to use it. And honestly, I don't even know that I actually need it. You see, I've got all of these medications over here too. And I'm really just starting to feel overwhelmed. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to take or how I'm supposed to take it. Okay, well, I can definitely help you with that today. So what we'll do is we'll talk more about diabetes and we'll also go through all your medications together to help you feel more comfortable. Okay. Let's start out by going through how to use your new glucometer that you got and also how to use your insulin. Clinical pharmacists work with your PCM to manage your medications for the following conditions. Asthma, COPD, diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Thank you so much for going over that information with me today. You know, when I came in, I felt very confused and frustrated, but now that we've had a chance to talk, I feel like I have a much better understanding of all these medications and what's going on. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I'm so glad you feel more comfortable. So what I'd like you to do is in four weeks, I'd like you to come back for a follow-up visit for about a 30-minute appointment. What we'll do then is I'll have you bring your new glucometer with you. You'll have your readings from, from since this visit, and we'll go through those together, and I'll answer any new questions that have come up since then. So you can schedule your appointment on your way out of clinic today at one of the front desks, and I'll see you in four weeks. Okay, here's your medication list. Thank you. And I'm going to go home and use my glucometer and take my insulin. That's wonderful. Clinical pharmacists can also provide the following services. Battlefield acupuncture, medication review, quitting tobacco, medication device training, vaccination screening, and medication refill alignments. Contact the clinical well. pharmacy technician uh, line to schedule an appointment. 910 uh, you or ask your provider for a referral. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Bello. Thank you for that video. Are we set, Dr. Bello? I'm going to receive this live on Alfonso. Uh, you are yet to receive the slides, sir. All right. So, meanwhile, um, I, I don't think we should, uh, while we are waiting for the slide, pharmacist uh, Emia Adama, you can, uh, you have the system there, you have the slides there. Because okay. Okay. Can I, can I? Can I? Can I try? Can I try here? Please. Yeah. Just you start your. You, uh, just just yeah, share. Advanced. Uh, click on the on the share screen. Okay. I clicked on it. Uh, it took me to. Um, to, to I your click on advanced. I click on advanced. You click on advanced. It will take you to your desktop. Okay. I saw. I can see the desktop portion of screen. Okay, you see your slide. Hello, before you click on share screen, open your slide already on the, on the, on your system. Leave it open. Okay. okay. On, fine. fine. Yeah. On the system. On the system. Okay. Now, okay, now click on where the location. This, this is your system now. Can you click on click on the the slide now? Uh, I am I am totally. Stop. Okay. Oh, okay. Before, you click on, before you click on the uh, share screen, open your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Open okay. It before, open it, then go to share screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, very okay. Okay. Okay.
before you go to share screen, open your PowerPoint presentation already. The my, the the other share, you know, as okay. just relax. Open it before you go to click. Okay, I've, I've already opened my I've already opened my slides. Okay, then go to when, when I was when I was doing that, this thing uh, became small. Okay. Uh, the 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 screen for the. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just uh, doesn't matter. Okay, I can continue. I can. You can continue. Just just share. Okay. And put it to her. Okay. 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 Can. I can go. I can. Can I go on with the presentation? Please go on. Go ahead. Then. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. So sorry, we're starting behind schedule. Uh, uh, good evening, my senior colleagues and uh, my colleagues. I still remain uh, pharmacist Rubia Adamu. I'm a member of uh, AHAP, a member of uh, CPAN, and a member of uh, OPAN. OPAN is uh, Oncology Pharmacy Practitioners Association of Nigeria. And I'm also an Assistant Director of Pharmaceutical Services and Head of Oncology Pharmacy Unit in, uh, in Joss University Teaching Hospital. Uh, the, objectives, the objectives of this uh, presentation are understanding of oncology pharmacy setup, two, knowing the rules of oncology pharmacies, and three, identifying proper ways of safe handling of cytotoxic drugs and hazardous uh, drugs. Uh, before I go on, uh, OPAN, which is you know the uh, association of which is uh, oncology pharmacy practitioner, practitioners association of Nigeria, are always advocating for hospitals in Nigeria to have oncology pharmacy unit. And that, that, that is why I decided to do this presentation. And before we go on, I would like to say that uh, before one uh, set up an oncology pharmacy, that, uh, there are things that are supposed to be, uh, are supposed to be looking to. Hello? Which one now? And you wrote N and you wipe it with cleaner to correct yourself. You still said after wiping the N, you are still saying it's N. Why did you wipe can the N? Can we mute ourselves? The speaker can't you unmute yourself? The, the speaker. Oh, I'm going to unmute yourself and continue. Yeah. I'm going to unmute yourself and continue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, before setting up an oncology pharmacy, uh, we uh, uh, the pharmacist is supposed to to be uh, acquainted with the self handling of uh, cytotoxic drugs. There are associations and also societies that came up with how to handle cytotoxic drugs. Uh, 19, 1990, 1990 the, 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 the American Society of Health System Pharmacies came up with, uh, came up with this, with calculating on handling cytotoxic and hazardous drugs. 2004, the NIOSH, which is the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, it was founded in 19 DC. They also came up with, with you know, with, with this, uh, that preventing occupational exposure to antenial plastic and other hazardous drugs uh, in healthcare system. Then 2005, the Nursing Oncology Society also issued the safe handling of hazardous drugs. The pharmacists should take the lead in developing policies and practice for safe handling of hazardous drugs. What is happening internationally with oncology pharmacy? April 2013, the British Oncology Pharmacy Association came up with this, that the Department of Health requires that all chemotherapy prescriptions should be checked and authorized by a pharmacist. The ISOP, 
which some of our members in OPAN belong to, uh, is uh, International Society of Oncology Pharmacy Practitioners. They also came up with, uh, with this, that there is a clear goal for ISOP members around the world on standard of practice of self-handling of cytotoxic drugs. Uh, ISOP is advocating that, uh, that, that her members all over the country, all over the world, should have, should have the same standard of practice of self-handling of cytotoxic drugs. Some are clients, and some are, are complying gradually. Uh, the healthcare workers may be hazardous drugs through, uh, I have manufacturing, distribution, transport, but for those who are in the hospital, it's, it starts from the receipt of supply of these cytotoxic drugs, then storage, then the uh, transport to where the drugs you know, are, are, are stored, then compounding, administration, and then waste handling. Then these cytotoxic drugs, can, one can come in contact with these cytotoxic drugs uh, through inhalation, and also through skin, intact skin, through injection, through inhalation. Uh, maybe during the preparation of the cytotoxic drug or during cleaning or during uh, uh, handling of the waste, uh, uh, one uh, the, 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 there could be droplets of uh, droplets uh, droplets or dust dispersed into the air, which can easily be inhaled by the pharmacist, and also through intact skin. The the pharmacist the pharmacist can come in contact directly from the work surface drop, and that can lead to absorption through the skin and injection. The the uh, the, 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 the pharmacist could ingest the cytosic drugs from the food that are kept in the refrigerator that cytosic drugs are kept, or in the working space, or in the reconstitution uh, room where the drugs are, are reconstituted. Uh, hello, pharmacist. Uh, Dr. Bello, like we are not hearing him again. He has a network issue, network challenge, uh, network. Um, so we lost him. He has a network uh, challenge. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe he wants to change his network. Let's wait for him. Okay, sir. Dr. Bello? Yes. Okay, I have sent the slides to you. I have sent the slides to you now yeah. through yeah. your WhatsApp. Yes, yeah. in here. Have you seen it, sir? Yes. Okay, it's on your WhatsApp right now. Yes, yeah, seen, seen. Yeah. Uh, 
Please, our pharmacist, let's be a little patient with the presenter. Like he's having some network challenge where he is in JAWS. Let's give him some time. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Bello have the slides and is uh, getting ready. He can put the slides here for us. And perhaps um, we'll, we'll take over the presentation or something, but let's see how it goes in some few minutes from now as we wait the presenter to come online again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bello. Uh, Dr. Bello? Yes. Okay, sir. Um, so um, um, he is not available because of his network. Um, I don't know uh, what is next. The people would uh, the fact, um, we just go through the slides or we wait for him. Let's wait for him a while. And let's wait for him a while. Somebody okay, okay, sir. Call through to him. Let's call him. I'll find okay, out. Okay, let me give him a call. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, pharmacist Ame. Yes, sir. You can start reading this slide now. It's very, it's direct. Okay. Just continue reading. Yeah. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. while, while we wait for our presenter to come up again from Joss. I will be reading the slides uh, while we all um, uh, uh, listen. And, and at the end of the day, we'll ask our questions and contributions. Thank you very much. Effects of exposure to cytotoxics, abdominal pain, hair loss, nasal sores, and vomiting. Uh, I don't know, uh, is that where he was before he went off, Dr. Bello? Uh, let's continue from there. At least we are on the first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Two, local toxic or allergic reaction and contact dermatitis. Normal blood cells count alteration, liver damage, foetal loss, and, malf and malformation of offspring. Next slide. Important things to consider in setting up an oncology pharmacy. Number one thing to consider is space. Number two is equipment. Number three, personnel. Number four, it's the phones. Number five, committed oncologists. Number six, thing you require to set up a pharmacy is committed and supportive head of department of pharmacy. Next slide, sir. 
design of the pharmacy. Ideally, the oncology pharmacy should be divided into three areas. A, one, a dispensing and storage area. Two, ante room. Three, mixing area that houses the biohazard cabinet. Next slide, sir. Dispensing and storage area. The dispensing and storage area for an oncology pharmacy should be safe and secure area. Storage of pharmaceutical products should be in accordance with Pharmacy Act 53 of 1974, as well as the Medicine and Related Substance Control Act 101, 1965. Storage should be away from direct sunlight. Room temperature should be monitored and recorded and an air conditioner and air conditioning should be available in the dispensing area. One site refrigerator is required to maintain cold chain. A thermometer and wash basin should be provided with dry facilities adjacent to it. Wall behind the wash hand basin should be impervious. Make sure no coffee cups in the area and adequately large work surface for collection and dispensing of prescription must be provided. Hazardous drugs should be stored separately from other stocks to prevent contamination and exposure. Close proximity to the clean room where technicians perform their support tasks. It is usually equipped with a sink, cabinet, and bench. Mixing area that house the biosafety cabinet the, the construction material, all surface in the anti-neoplastic mixing and storage areas should be impervious. The walls should either have vinyl or enamel paint that can withstand repeated cleaning and disinfectant. The doors should have closures and elbow, elbow operating handles. Ceilings should be unitary constructed and light fitting. The floor should not be fitted with a carpet but constructed of a concrete base and finished with a smooth impervious washable surface so that they are easy to clean. A still on the mixing area, a disturbance free zone of one meter should also be maintained at the side of the bench. Installed objects should be arranged so as to maintain the minimum separation to the workbench. Cabinet purpose, in varying degree, a laminar flow biological safety cabinet is designed to provide three basic types of protection. One, personnel protection from harmful agents inside the cabinet. Two, product protection to avoid contamination of the work surface. Three, environmental protection from contaminants within the cabinet. The International Society of Oncology Pharmacy Practitioners recommend a class 11B2 total exhaust for preparation. This cabinet exhausts all inflows and downflow air to the atmosphere after filtration without recirculation inside the cabinet or return to the workroom. Airflow is drowned around the operator into the front grill of the cabinet, which provides personnel protection. Downward laminar flow, HEPA filtered air protects product by providing particulate free air to work surface. The International Society of, uh, well, on still on that, uh, on, on, on biosafety cabinet for toxic operation, continuation, laminar airflow reduces turbulence in the work zone, minimizing the chance of cross-contamination along the workbench. Environment, environment protection is achieved by HIPAA filtered exhaust air from the cabinet. The cabinet should be on casters so that it can be moved when validating the hood. The newer design cabinet do not have to be moved to remove HEPA filter. Well, uh, class two type B2 biosafety cabinet, that's um, uh, an, an example of what the, the, the class two type B2 biosafety, you know, this is not my presentation. Um, unfortunately, our presenter is out, but he's supposed to be showing this because that is his work area. But these are all samples of what he's talking about. Next slide, sir. 2018 model of class two type B2 biosafety cabinet. 
and uh, A-B-U-T-H. Class two type B2 biosafety cabinet, all these are uh, diagrams uh, buttressing uh, this presentation. The extraction system. The extraction system should be fitted with a carbon filter and a HEPA filter. Have a required height of two meter above the roof of the building. Fitted with an anti-blowback anti unit to prevent any outside air entering the extraction duct in the event of fan failure. The extraction system is monitored by pressure switches, which should set off an alarm in the event of low or unsafe extraction rate. The following human resources should be considered. Temperature. Temperature in the mixing area should be adjusted to lower than normal in the range of 18 degrees to 23 degrees Celsius. Size of room, unimpaired functioning of the safety workbench. There should be minimum requirement for room size, height, and freedom of movement. Extensive information on minimal separation is given in, in British standard BS 5226 part two, 1991. Telephone or intercom system Comfort at the biohazard cabinet. The ideal oncology pharmacy should also have the following, pass-through hatches, air supply, pressure differential air conditioning. Handling cytotoxics, acceptance of drug deliveries performed by trained pharmacy personnel, opening packages, carefully inspect primary packaging, for damage and contamination. The incident is documented, copies sent to the manufacturer. Transport to place of storage, personnel protective equipment while in the oncology pharmacy or units. You need gowns, gloves, hair covers, shoe cover, and a mask. Now this is what it looks like to be in, uh, in the oncology setup as a pharmacist. I guess uh, this may, must be our dear pharmacist, Emia, who is supposed to be presenting right now, but for network challenge. So this is the dress code in oncology unit. Personal hygiene, eating, drinking, chewing or smoking or storage of drinks and food should be prohibited in all area in the oncology unit. Use hand washing facilities regularly and correctly. Handling cytotoxics. Cytotoxics are potentially toxic even when administered correctly with correct dose and schedule. Many have narrow therapeutic window. We all know what that is. So, so minor errors in dose or schedules can be life-threatening complication. Many newer target agents also have complications as the traditional cytotoxic chemotherapy. Dose calculation. Well, this is a formula for dose calculation um, for, those, for, for, for those practicing in the oncology unit. This is the formula for calculating uh, the required dose for the patient. Take cognizance of the body surface area, the weight and height of the patient, the AUC, taking into account height, age, weight, gender, creating in clearance. And then um, uh, I think we can move on. That is um, the formula there. Thank you. Uh, dispensing of oral drugs, oral cytotoxic drugs. You're gonna, you use a separate tablet counting tray and disposable tongue play, blades. Wipe tablet counting tray with 70% alcohol solution after each use before next dispensing. Personnel protective equipment should be used when handling crush or broken oral tablets. Administration of cytotoxic. The main aim should be to protect both nurse and patient from contamination and to prevent extra 
vaccination of drugs. Management of extra vaccination of physical drugs before administration of cytotoxics. The nurse should know which agents are capable of causing necrosis. The potential hazards should always be remembered. Redness and swelling from anthracycline extra vaccination. This is a, an example, blistering and necrosis from extra vaccination. All these are example of extra vaccination. Physical drug cytotoxic agents, camustine, dagabazine, dactinomycin, daunorubicin, doxirubicin, epirubicin, mitomycin, mitomycin C, paclitazel, vinblastin, vincristine, vinoral, vinoral bean, bolsofan, cisplastin, dagabazine, doxidazel, liposomal daunorubicin, liposomal doxirubicin, mycosanctron, oxy, oxaliplatin, topitican, etopicide, tenopicide, gemcitabine, melphalan. Non-tissue damaging cytotoxics, example, 5 fluorouracil metotrexate, carboplastin, irinotecan, asparaginase, bleomycin, cyclophosphamide, cytarabine, fludarabine, gocerilin, ephosphamide, interleukin-2, melphalan. General management of extra vaccination of chemotherapeutic agents. If there is extra vaccination, like the examples we saw on those diagrams of extra vaccination, stop the injection you are administering immediately. Don't remove needle, put on gloves, attach syringe, and attempt to aspirate five mil of blood slash fluid. Remove syringe and dispose in biohazard container. Attach syringe or intermittent injection cap to, to the end of catheter slash needle to maintain sterility. Notify physician on call. Refer to protocol for specific antidote. Apply ice pack for 15 minutes, four times a day for three days for all physical drugs except for alkaloid family, where a warm compress is applied for 60 minutes once. Elevate area if possible and or encourage movement. Redness and pain from administration of doxorubicin. All these are, I think, examples of the extra vaccination. Transportation. The transport of cytotoxins should be carefully handled with caution. Adequate warnings should be given to personnel who carries the drug to the world. The delivery must be made in sealed leak proof cases. Labeling. Label on the outside of the package must consist of the following, where the parcel is going, specifying the word and patient. A logo indicating danger. A warning that can easily be understood even by untrained person. Who to meet in case of emergency or contamination all this must be on the label. Pregnant and breastfeeding personnel should not handle this content. Right? That's like an example of the labeling. Next. Label for reconstituted drugs as the as they practice uh, where he works in uh, just, just University Teaching Hospital. There will be a patient name the kind of injection, uh, the cytotoxic the patient is taking will be there on the label, the administration sequence, 
um, something like um, uh, um, the frequency and all of that, the flow rate, name and signature of attending pharmacist must also be on the label. Procedure for cleaning spills. Cytotoxic spills in any area are regarded to be hazardous. Remove patients, visitors, and hospital personnel from the area where spills occurred. Two, an oncology pharmacist must remove the spill in, in technically correct manner. Personnel protective clothing must be worn while cleaning spills. Spills involving not more than five mil liquid or powder. How to handle that? Wear protective clothing. Wipe liquid with absorbent gauze or disposable towel. For powder use, for, for a powder, use a moist towel if it's powder spill. Cleaning spills three times using detergent solution followed by clean water. Place contaminated items in a disposable bag for chemotherapy. Spills involving more than five mil of liquid or powder from cytotoxic agents, a spill kit must be used. Large spills, yeah. Procedure for cleaning large spills. Large spills are to be cleaned up immediately. Clear the area of people, mark the area to prevent contamination. From the spills kits, use, use marks, goggle, gown, protective shoe, cover, and gloves. Place all saturated towel in an unlabeled bag. Place absorbent towel gently on spills, taking care not to touch spill or generate aerosol. Keep, keep two towels for step eight. Remove any broken glass fragment with scoop, place them in puncture resistant container and place in a bag. If it is dry spill, moisten towel to scoop up dry powder. Place all saturated towel in an unlabeled bag, wipe area with moistened gauze, gauze pad and place in a disposable bag. Remove contaminated apparel and place in a disposable bag. Close on label, on label bag and place in label bag. The goggle and scoop can be washed copious amount of water and reused. Seal the label bag and dispose of it appropriately. Report spill to pharmacies for evaluation of any further action that may be required. First aid, eye contact, skin contact. Exclusion from working in situ cytotoxic preparation should include those who are ill should be excluded from working in that unit. Uh, I think um, family planning also those uh, exclusion from working cytotoxic preparations should include illness, family planning, abnormal pathology results. Cleaning protocols, dispensary, and clean rooms. PPE should be worn when cleaning. All areas should be cleaned daily. Wash down all surfaces, counters and walls with chlorine-based detergent and sprayed with 70% alcohol. Use a dedicated mop for dispensary and a separate one for clean rooms. Disposed cleaning materials are recommended this should be disposed of along with other cytotoxic wastes. Clean cabinets, biosafety cabinets, clean cabinet with disinfectant cleaner containing organic chlorine and detergent compound. Wipe the surfaces, including the front, sides, and bottom. Clean from upstream, closest to the HIPAA filter to downstream. Start with rear wall and move down. Wipe in a continuous motion working parallel to the HIPAA filter. After cleaning, do not use hood for five minutes to allow alcohol to dry. Use bags, gloves, used bags, gloves, swabs, admin lines, ETC, to be disposed in proper biohazard waste, container to be incinerated by a reputable biohazard waste, disposable company. The container should be marked cytotoxic waste. 
Dispose all contaminated equipment intact, high temperature incineration greater than 1,100 degrees Celsius is recommended for cytotoxic waste. Separate non-chemotherapy wastes. Documentation of waste disposal should be kept. Documentation, health results, procedure manual, exposure to cytotoxics, prescription information for facilities, the following logs should be maintained. Microbiological monitoring results, certificate of equipment for routine maintenance. Temperature logs, both refrigerator and room temperature logs to be recorded twice daily. Cytotoxic spills to be recorded. Roles of oncology pharmacists. What are the roles of oncology pharmacists? Number one, the pharmacist is to check the prescription, check of prescription, check of prescription against the protocol and treatment plan for patients on cytotoxics. Three, check patient details. Four, check administration details. Five, check the calculation. Six, check laboratory results, compounding of cytotoxic drugs, signature and date. Conclusion, if oncology pharmacy is to be set up in any hospital, experts' opinions will be needed. Cancer therapy should be carried out by a specialized oncologist or trained personnel. Health institutions should educate professionals on safe handling of cytotoxic drugs. Health institutions should have oncology pharmacy units. Pharmacy departments should stock cytotoxic drugs to meet patients' needs. Dr. Bell, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Thank you. That is the end of the, the presentation. Thank you very, very much, uh, everyone who is uh, online tonight. Thank you. And I don't know, um, our, our presenter uh, it has not rejoined us again. We thank all of you who came online, uh, who, is part, who are part of this presentation tonight. Uh, we are going straight. Um, well, like I said, this uh, is not my presentation. I am not the expert in that field. Um, but we are going to uh, be answering, asking questions. Um, and I, I hope, uh, I don't know, uh, Dr. Bello, how we're going to do this. The questions you are going to ask, yeah, I'm not the expert Dr. and the Peter. professional there. So what do we do? Dr. Peter, you can call Dr. Peter. He wants to ask All questions. Right. Yeah. OK, um, so uh, we are creating rooms for questions answers and then contribution. Uh, Dr. Peter, uh, can you unmute yourself? Thank you, sir. Hello, good evening, all. Good evening, sir. Yeah, um, once again, sorry about the challenges we had tonight. I had made several efforts to reach out to the presenter during the course of this meeting while you presented. Unfortunately, I was not able to connect with him. You know? oh, it's okay, sir. So time, I made sure had the slide. So uh, with respect to what we saw as the slide, I had the original copy of the slide. I think some things were skipped from the presentation. And one of which oh. is with rules, uh, respect to the rules of the, cons of the oncology pharmacies. He had in the original slide some basic calculations. So okay. basic calculations in that the oncology pharmacist needs to be very good in doing some uh, simple calculation related to the medical. I think we we'll lose uh, Dr. Afonso soon. This is a network I think, I think uh, all of them in JOS are having a network challenge. I think so. I don't know now. Um, um, any other person? Um, uh, um, 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 Dr. Can you go ahead and I'm okay. just saying. Um, 
Dr. Are you there? Good evening, colleagues. And uh, as I appreciate the opportunity um, But uh, what I just want to say is, I, I don't know whether we'll be able, whether it will be possible for us to have the this presentation sent to us. It could be, I don't know how arrangements could be made so that we could have this presentation to really go through. That's just the comments I want to make. Okay, okay. Um, the presentation, um, I, he sent it to me uh, just now. I sent it to Dr. Bello. The presentation uh, immediately after this, um, this meeting, the presentation will be put on the Telegram platform and all, uh, I think the Telegram platform, we are going to put that presentation there on the Telegram platform. Uh, but I'm going to liaise with um, uh, Dr. Bello after this meeting. Uh, and also the presenter, I'll forget him, but you are going to have the presentation. That will be done, thank you. Uh, thank Dr. You. Timmy, yes, thank you, sir. Dr. Timmy, I think you are also raising your hand. Um, you can yes, unmute I yourself. Am. Thank you, ma, thank you, ma. You can oh, unmute thank yourself. You. Thank you, good evening, ma. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, ma. Hello, good evening, can you hear me? Good evening, ma, I can hear you. All right. Um... Thank you so much, pharmacist. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, Ame. Um, Thank you for you know helping us out. In fact, uh, I don't know. Um, this kind of and um, Dr. Peter, who is also the coordinator for you know Plateau State, is also having issues too. Tonight's network has yes. been very challenging. Even me, I've just been going out and also coming in, so it has been it has. Really be fluctuating, but I want to suggest I I am thinking that I'm going to talk with Doctor Doctor Peter. Let's see how we can redo this presentation again, even if it's to feature in the special one of our special editions, because um, this topic I know many facilities still don't have the uh, you know oncology department, and so we're actually looking forward to him telling us how we can set it up. Because he had, you know, guidelines that he had in mind. And just the way Dr. Peter said, he had calculations to show us and all this. And now we couldn't reach him. I don't know. So we are going to um, discuss this on the, uh, you know, education platform. Let's see how we can get him again to um, help us out with this particular presentation. But you, I must say, you know, Ahmed, thanks a lot. You, you really helped us out. We would have been asking questions by now, but we know, like you said, it's not your field. <laughs> so we don't want yes. to bore you. We don't want to stress you. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you, thank Dr. you so much. Thank you. thank you, Dr. Timmy. Uh, I think you raise a very valid point um, because this is a, a very unique field. And uh, just this afternoon, I was speaking with uh, the presenter, and then he told me that a lot of people are interested. Uh, our distinguished professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Wanang, or so, or, or somebody else, I, I can't tell now. Um, uh, they are they are looking forward to this presentation, so that um, uh, you know the college is uh, is undergoing, I think, a development of specialty right now. So so that they can just the way you said, other hospitals want to set up oncology units, and then even the college and all of that. So people are interested, and I think uh, it will take the professional and the expert in that field, which he is. Um, to really give out um, this lecture and to answer questions. So it's a good suggestion, Dr. Timmy. Um, and we are going to talk, we are going to sit down at the education committee level after this meeting or so. Uh, you are the chairman of the education committee and then we'll see what we do going forward. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question or contribution? Any other question or contribution? Uh, I can't see any hand raised, Dr. Bello. Any other, um, I think, I think uh, 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 is, is our coordinator with us, the national coordinator, national president, Dr. Joseph Madu. Uh, no, he's not online. Is, all right. But uh, anybody, um, those of you that are the senior men there, Dr. Bello, 
uh, 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 Dr. Timmy, and uh, our Sipan Secretary. Uh, I think uh, if we are going to go with uh, what Dr. Timmy is saying, I want you guys to summarize on that um, so that um, we, we can shut down and then uh, arrange for, but I wanted Dr. Joseph Madu to give a comment or any of you that are the senior men at the national level. I'm here. Okay, Hello, Dr. Timmy. So far. Thank you. Hello, sir. Oh, so, yes, I can hear you. Okay. They said, man. Um, proposes God disposes in tonight. Yes. Hello, hello. I hope I'm happy. Okay. Yes. I said so I the you. usual thing is man proposes, God disposes. So Almighty God knows why we have it to turn out this week tonight. But because of the topic and And to all of us that we have been looking forward to the personal, so we are going to learn setting up one. So we are still going to have it. The format is going to take, we can't see for now. Definitely we'll get the presentation, put it out there for all of us to go through. Then I think maybe you get across to a lot of us that have questions. We'll discuss it at the education committee and let the house know what the decision is but okay. the topic will still go to the bottom of it inshallah mm. thank you for thank standing here now i'm showing up bigly mm. thank you thank you man. thank uh, you man. Uh, god bless you uh, uh, uh who just spoke is it dr buki thank you yes. man. yes yes thank you man. thank you um um uh, we are shutting down so she has spoken on behalf of has. um yes she has spoken on behalf of um uh, our national coordinator and then uh, our executive arm of uh, SIPAN. So I think she's she's the we, national we chairman. Down. Yes, national chairman. Yes. So yes. on behalf of him, you have done a good job, and I think uh, it is carried. I hope the whole house agree, Doctor Bello. You are in agreement with us. Yes. Yeah, somebody suggested that the presenter can pre-record the presentation. Then, okay. And then we can play the record. Doing another meeting in case he has okay. challenges. So you can, at the convenient time, you can record the, the presentation fully. All right. So it's okay. Go, Thank you. So, uh, now we know. Right. Uh, it's all right, sir. Thank you. Uh, someone is raising her hand, uh, uh, pharmacist. Our presenter is back online, but uh, don't worry. Someone is raising. Um, a uh, hand, uh, pharmacist Egbo Ungozi Josephine. Uh, can you can you unmute yourself and ask your question or give your contribution, pharmacist Egbo Ungozi Josephine? Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Good good evening, everybody. Um, as I just uh, introduced me, uh, this is the first time I'm appearing on this uh, presentation, and I must say, I'm actually quite um, glad to be here. Uh, at this presentation. Um, Thank you. We, we have been talking about uh, oncology pharmacy and uh, I want to find out uh, what is the role of oncology pharmacy in the community uh, setting? How can one, uh, how can one uh, set up one in a community setting? Because it's all, everything that's uh, being talked about is in a hospital sex setting. Is it possible for one to uh, have an oncology pharmacy in a community setting? Thank you very much. Thank you for the presenter. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, our dear pharmacist and fellow. Uh, I salute you, ma, all the way from Benue State. God bless you, ma. Uh, our presenter is online. Okay. So uh, you, uh, God bless you, pharmacist uh, Imia. Adamu, God bless you. Yes, sorry God. about, sorry about, sorry about your network issues, but um, I ah. think, uh, I, yes, you can respond to her question. Oh. She was saying, she was saying that uh, how do you set up oncology pharmacy in the community? Is it only applicable to the hospital setting? And what is the role of a pharmacist or something? You had that very clear. Yes, yes. 
Uh, sorry, I, I didn't know that I was just talking to myself until I finished the presentation that I, I discovered that I was, I was offline. Uh, uh, to, to have an oncology pharmacy in the community setting, can you hear me? Yes, I can Hello. hear you. Can you hear me? I think yes, with yes, uh, yes, what, you, we can, what, yes. you, what you can do is only is only uh, is is uh, in the community you cannot have oncology pharmacy there. You can have oncology pharmacy where the, where people can assess drugs, but there are other things that cannot be done in the community, like uh, administration of the cytosic drugs. It cannot be done. And then you can also create awareness on cancer to people in the community. I've done that in my church on breast cancer. I've created awareness on breast cancer to the people in my church. But that is, uh, um, that is public health. Uh, but for setting up an oncology pharmacy in the community for, for, for managing you know, cancer, I think is not okay. It's not okay. But we can have the oncology pharmacy outlets where patients can access, you know, their anti-neoplastic agents or cytosis drugs. I don't know if I if I've been able to answer a question. Uh, pharmacist, uh, pharmacist Ebo, I hope he has answered you. That's a specialized uh, kind of care. And uh, I don't think uh, um, uh, uh, it's suitable for community practice except public health. And like he said, if you, are, if you are promoting awareness, you can do that in the community setting, not like uh, administration of medication and all of that uh, in the community setting. I hope we are all clear. Any other question? The presenter is here. You can, you can, we, we still have some time here. The presenter is here. You can ask him your questions uh, concerning oncology, concerning the role of a pharmacist, whatever you want to ask now. We can do that before we shut down. Thank you. Any contribution, any question? Uh, but uh, pharmacist uh, Adamu, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, 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 but already there was a motion for the repeat uh, or something of uh, this presentation. But uh, let's hear from Dr. Olulawal, uh, the Secretary of SIPAN. Uh, Ma, you can unmute yourself and see what you want to say, Ma. A question or a okay. contribution. The presenter is here. Thank okay. you. Ma. Okay. Welcome to our presenter. Sorry about the heat. We're enjoying the something before you went off. Please, for those of us that where we work, we don't have an oncology unit. How in fear, can you tell us how do we go about setting up one? You know, every hospital these days, you have cancer patients, but when it gets to that point, they have to, sometimes they refer, then all that time, but for farmers, we don't have. Uh, so okay. how could... Uh, you... You, you can start with you know HOD. If, if you have to set up an oncology pharmacy, will not be uh, because uh, management where cancer patient, the management are also always interested in that the, the patients are well taken care of, are well, and they know the importance of pharmacists. The pharmacists play in my institution. Where are the ones that cytosis drops? So, uh, I, but may I ask you, do you have any radiation and clinical oncologists? Because I know, I, I know that we don't have medical oncologists in the country. If we have, it might be one or two, but do you have any radiation and clinical oncologists, uh, uh, oncology in your, in your hospital? If, if we don't- What is the question? I said, do you have radiation and clinical oncologists in your in your hospital? We don't. Okay, that is why you know opening an oncology pharmacy is going to be a problem because the management will not have interest in opening one. But 
but your, your, yeah, but your... the doctor, uh, the the physicians there, they usually manage to a certain extent. Because in my institution, when when the surgeons were the ones managing the the cancer patients, we had, we didn't have we didn't have oncology pharmacy unit until when they saw the need for us to have, and then we had, uh, we, they formed, you know, uh, oncology committee, which I was part of the oncology committee. And after our report, they now saw the need to employ radiation and clinical uh, oncologists, and they employed two. And that also helped us to have the oncology pharmacy unit. But if your, your HOD can push for the oncology pharmacy unit, and then ensure that, you know, you have one. Okay, okay, thank you. I've even picked one thing for me in the committee. Yes, thank you so yes. much. You know, there must thank you. for any hospital to assess the managing cancer patient to assess grant, there must be a tumor board. And the tumor board, you know, and comprises of all the professionals that are uh, involved in the hospital. So when the time comes, they will even look for you. Okay. They will mm -hmm. look for the pharmacist. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, Ma. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Timmy, unmute uh, yourself. Thank you, Ma, uh, for your question or contribution. The expert is here. Thank you, Ma. Yeah, thank you so much, um, our, our wonderful presenter. Please, I want to find out, I know in my facility we don't have, but I do know that we have um, oncology nurses, Yes, I've seen, and even the doctors, because I know during this um, um, cancer week, they do a lot of um, uh, public health campaign, celebration, and then all that. And I know we also have cancer cancer registry in yes. my facility. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, that's all I know. But, and I know there was a time my HOD was actually talking about um, um, setting up this uh, oncology pharmacy but um, I, I don't know whether, I know that for now, nothing has been done, but what I want to ask, I know one of the limitations is um, um, specifically training. Train, yeah. What kind of training do you think the person or the pharmacist, what, which aspect, where should the pharmacist, um, what kind of training will the pharmacist um, do in order to come out? Because some of us that have done this, um, this um, fellowship program with, uh, with um, you know, WAPCB, there was no such um, um, thing like that then. I know now because um, I think the moderator was mentioning that um, Dr. I mean, Professor, Professor Wana was talking about his um, you know, interest in it. So I don't know, for those of us that are already in the system, do you, what kind of training do you think you can recommend for those Pharmacies working now so that they can be able to um, set up such oncology units in their facility. Okay. Uh, as I said in my presentation, I don't know whether I was off that time. Uh, you know, there is no formal, there is no formal, uh, uh, there is no formal uh, education program available for handling and and, 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 and preparation of these cytotoxic drugs. And what happens is that whoever is experienced or whoever you know, uh, has had you know, training is expected that the person train others. And the areas of training will be the safe handling of these cytotoxic drugs because they are, they are hazardous. They can, over, if somebody is exposing himself, over time you start having side effects like somebody who is on chemotherapy and then with time the person can even come down with cancer uh, so the person what the first thing is to know how to handle the cytotoxic drugs the safe handling of the cytotoxic drugs then there are also training on how to use the biosafety cabinet then then you know that the, there are training also on uh, the, the constitution of this cytosis drug. The constitution is not just missing the way the nurses, you know, do. They just miss, miss, miss. They don't know what is actually happening. You know, you have to get the right fluid to miss the drugs with, and also you have to know the uh, the administra I mean, administration sequence. We are the ones that tell the nurses the administration sequence. Uh, if you are reconstituting three drugs for a patient, you know, you don't expect the 
any of the drugs to be administered to the patient. One must be must come first, then there's another one that will come second, then there's another one that will come third. The one that will come first will be the vesicant, the one that can easily irritate the blood vessels. So you give that one first when the blood vessels is intact. Then, uh, then the one that will come second is cell cycle specific. Then the one that will come third, third is cell cycle non-specific. So, cell cycle specific, if you look at the cell cycle, uh, the cell cycle, the phases of the cell cycle, there are some of the cytosis drugs that attack the, all the cell cycle, all the uh, phases of the cell cycle. Those ones we call them cell cycle non-specific. Then there are some that attack only a specific you know, phase, like maybe the M phase. Those ones that attack the M phase are the taxans. Tazens like Pactazel and those and those that attack, and then also the Vika alkaloids, like they've been pristine and been blasting. And then those that attack, those ones are called cell cycle specific. And then those that attack only the X phase, they are they are they, they, they are also called cell cycle specific because they are they are the uh, anti-metabolites, the like uh, fluoroacetyl. Uh, then we also have training. There should be training, documentation, and also on how to clean the spills, you know, from the toxic drugs, and also labeling. Labeling is also important. Then there are also training uh, 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 in emergency uh, procedures. So there are so many trainings that need to be carried out, need to be carried out, uh, you know, for people who want to be in the oncology unit. Mm. Thank, you, so that, well. Thank you. So, Thank the, you. Uh, calculation is very important again. You know, you have to know how to, because we double check the calculation of the physicians. Uh, but, uh, the calculations are based on body surface area, except for carboplatin that use the Calvert formula to calculate for carbon, because carboplatin dose is in relation to the renal function of you know, the patient. So carboplatin dose is not calculate, calculated based on body surface area like other ones. Well, okay, so uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank uh, you, uh, thank you, the presenter. Uh, there is uh, someone, uh, Pharmacist Felix, uh, you have a question to answer, can I ask? Can you unmute yourself? Can you unmute yourself, Pharmacist Felix? Unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Pharmacist Felix? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, well, in the absence of that, while we are waiting for Pharmacist Felix to ask his question, Dr. Bello, please, uh, our dear Ogadi, Dr. Bello, uh, while we are waiting for Felix to ask his question, can we have, um, there was something that was wrong during the uh, video of the SIPAM video of the week. Uh, we need a replay. Uh, maybe in the next three, four minutes, we need a replay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, about your mute yourself. Mute yourself. Medication. Mute yourself. Has it ever seemed a bit overwhelming? Do you ever feel like you need more time for someone to go over your medications with you? If so, Womack Army Medical Center has clinical pharmacists who are medication experts that will sit down with you and assist you in understanding your prescriptions. All right, Ms. Smith, your lab results came back and it shows that you have diabetes. I know you're already taking a lot of medications and this new diagnosis can be overwhelming. We have clinical pharmacists here if you're interested in seeing one. Yes, I am. They can go over your new medications and talk with you about how to manage your diabetes. Okay, how do I make the appointment? Scheduling your appointment is as easy as going to the front desk or calling this phone number here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Clinical Pharmacy. This is Ms. Davis. How may I help you? Hi, this is Mrs. Smith. My doctor recommended that I meet with the clinical pharmacist 
I was just diagnosed with diabetes. I'm already on a ton of medications, and now she started me on some new ones. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to take or when I'm supposed to take them. No problem. We can assist you with that. We have clinical pharmacists and all our primary care clinics that work hand-in-hand -hand with your primary care provider to help manage your medications. The clinical pharmacist can meet with you for 30 or 60 minutes, depending on your needs. Since this is an initial appointment, Ms. Smith, we will recommend a 60-minute appointment. Which clinic are you assigned to? I'm assigned to Clark Clinic. How does Tuesday at 10 o'clock sound? That'll be perfect. Where should I go and what am I supposed to bring? You'll be seeing Dr. Womack, the clinical pharmacist who is located on Team 2. Please check in at the front desk, bring all your medications to the appointment to include anything you are taking over the counter as well as your glucometer. During your appointment, the clinical pharmacist will go over each medication to screen for drug interactions and side effects. At the end of the appointment, you will be provided with an updated medication list. You may want to make a list of questions or concerns that you want to discuss at your visit. Ms. Smith, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. So I'm going to bring my medication bottles and I'll bring my glucometer. This sounds like it's going to be very helpful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Womack will see you on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. If you need to reschedule your appointment, please contact your clinic. Thank you and have a great day, Ms. Smith. Hi, Ms. Smith. I'm Dr. Womack, one of the clinical pharmacists. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Your doctor referred you to me to discuss your new diagnosis of diabetes and to go over your new medications today. Yes, I was diagnosed with diabetes last week and they've started me on insulin. I've went to the pharmacy to pick it up, but I've not started taking it yet. I'm not really sure that I even know how to use it. And honestly, I don't even know that I actually need it. You see, I've got all of these medications over here too, and I'm really just starting to feel overwhelmed. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to take or how I'm supposed to take it. Okay, well I can definitely help you with that today. So what we'll do is we'll talk more about diabetes and we'll also go through all your medications together to help you feel more comfortable. Okay. Let's start out by going through how to use your new glucometer that you got and okay. also how to use your insulin. Okay. okay. Clinical pharmacists work with your PCM to manage your medications for the following conditions. Asthma, COPD, diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Thank you so much for going over that information with me today. You know, when I came in, I felt very confused and frustrated, but now that we've had a chance to talk, I feel like I have a much better understanding of all these medications and what's going on. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I'm so glad you feel more comfortable. So what I'd like you to do is in four weeks, I'd like you to come back for a follow-up visit for about a 30-minute appointment. What we'll do then is I'll have you bring your new glucometer with you. You'll have your readings from, from since this visit, and we'll go through those together, and I'll answer any new questions that have come up since then. So you can schedule your appointment on your way out of clinic today at one of the front desks, and I'll see you in four weeks. Okay. Here's your medication list. Thank you. And I'm going to go home and use my glucometer and take my insulin. That's wonderful. Thanks. Clinical pharmacists can also provide the following services. Battlefield acupuncture, medication review, quitting tobacco, medication device training, vaccination screening, and medication refill alignment. Contact the clinical pharmacy technician line to schedule an appointment. 910-643-2513 or ask your provider for a referral. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bello, for that uh, wonderful clip. Thank you. Um, uh, before we went on that break for, uh, for five minutes, we, are, we will be shutting down any moment. Uh, uh, Pharmacist Felix is supposed to ask you a question and then we shut down uh, almost immediately because um, uh, at the Education Committee, we are thinking that this presentation will happen again. So uh, Pharmacist Felix, uh, yes, it's an interesting field and it's a specialized one. You know what I, I was saying? I was just uh, stammering here. Uh, what question am I going to answer? Thank God you came up again. Thank you. So um, Pharmacist Felix is not uh, online. Uh, in the absence of uh, any other person uh, asking question tonight, uh, if you have your question, you can still direct it to our specialist oncology pharmacist. You can direct your question to him. 
and we trust God that um, another opportunity will be made available for us to have a very good time with um, this professional uh, amongst us uh, who is a specialist in oncology. So uh, if there are no questions, can we uh, start uh, um, rounding up with a closing prayer? Uh, I want to thank every pharmacist uh, on behalf of um, uh, Dr. Joseph Madu, our chairman, and um, on behalf of the education committee uh, shared by Dr. Timi, and all people, great people who contributed tonight, Dr. Bello, you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And every other pharmacist, our professors, fellows, uh, senior colleagues, colleagues, everyone who came online, uh, who, made, who made it happen today, at least you encourage us by your presence. Despite the network fluctuations, you are here to really boost what is happening tonight. I want to thank all of you. Uh, can we invite, I'd like to invite um, uh, our, our own uh, pharmacist for a closing prayer. We say the closing prayer tonight. Pharmacist Maria uh, uh, Unaji. She is the assistant director. So not, she is deputy director. Pharmaceutical services, Benue State University Teaching Hospital. She is the deputy coordinator of SIPAN in Benue, our mother and our boss. So I'd like to welcome um, pharmacist Maria Unaji, a fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists, uh, who is doing us proud here in Benue to close this meeting with a closing prayer. Pharmacist Maria, you can unmute yourself and close this meeting. Thank you. Are you there? Pharmacist Maria. Pharmacist Maria, she's still online, but I don't know what is happening. Hello. Thank you, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. You can close us with the closing prayer. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. I want uh, in Jesus' mm -hmm. name, we, our mm -hmm. Father, and thank you for bringing us to the end of this session tonight. Despite all the hitches, we give you glory. At least we have learned something. Even as we, for those of us that are yet to have an oncology, Father, we pray that you help us. Our management, Father, will be supportive. That will be able to set up our own. Even those that have, Father, we ask the mighty King of Glory that the knowledge you have gained tonight, we use it to impart. Uh, to impart management of our patient positively to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Presenter. Dr. Bello, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pharmacist Adamu, thank you so much. Thank all of you for this great work. Uh, we, we, we hope to have a better time. So, uh, um, every, everyone, Everyone have a nice night rest. Uh, Good God night. bless all of you.